So let's go over the controls for derivations in Logic 2010. Let's start with the very, very first one. The first thing you want to do is start a new line. You can do that just by pressing Enter. Press Enter, and I get a new line. Now, uh, to start the derivation, you always use a show line. So you say show conclusion. If I press Enter, that'll give me a show line. Or if I go over this box and just right click it, it gives me this drop down menu with lots of options for me. So what I'd like here is show conclusion. We'll get to what all of these other things mean as we develop our skills with derivations. So for now, show conclusion. And that gives me show not Q, which is the conclusion that we're trying to derive. Now we set about trying to derive it and we're going to type in uh, which rules we want to use and which uh, assets we're going to plug into those rules in this column here, this middle column here. Now, uh, we've only got two premises here, uh, and so far we've only introduced four rules, so our options are limited. Um, what we can see is we've got not p, and we've got if q, then p. So, what we're going to do is take premise 1, PR1, space, and premise 2, PR2, space. We're going to use modus tollens on it. Modus tollens, MT. Press enter, and it knows that that means not Q. All right? Now, line 2 is the thing that we were trying to show. It was That was a one-line derivation. Uh, and so now we can say on line 2, not premise 2, but line 2, we have a direct derivation, okay? So, uh, that's all fairly straightforward. A couple of variations, so show conclusion. We could have said premise two, premise one, modus tollens. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes, yeah, so you can see I made a typo here. You can see this column uh, errors uh, messages will show up if you do, do something wrong. So here I didn't write PR2, I wrote P1. Or sorry, I didn't write PR1, I wrote P1, which is not a thing. So you need to read PR1, premise 1, modus tollens. You can see the only difference there was the order. So I flipped the order around and it didn't matter. Similarly, if I'd written it all in capital letters, that's fine too. You still get uh, the answer. Okay? Uh, so line three, direct derivation. Okay, let's do one more. We'll do the second one here. Right. So I say delete, I can delete my work. Press enter to start a new line. And then I do the show line, show conclusion. Now, uh, I have a few, I only have two premises, and there's not much I can do with just P. So I know I need to do something with the first premise. Uh, and what I can do is do a double negation on it. So I say premise one space double negation. And then it'll give me this pop-up menu of which form of the double negated premise one do I want. These are both things that you could get from double negating this premise. In this case, I don't want four negations. I just want no negations. So I say, okay. Now, Premise one, double negation, gives us if p then q, and premise two is p, so I can now say premise two and line two, modus ponens, and that gives me q, so line three is my direct derivation. Okay, now you could tighten that up a little. We could do this in one fewer line if you want it. Do this one more time, show conclusion, what I can do is write more rules on this one line. So I say premise one, double negation, and instead of making that the whole line, I can now say premise two, modus ponens. So the premise one gets double negated, and then the result of that gets combined with premise two in a modus ponens. I still have to choose which form, but I, now I get Q as my output. So now, instead of two lines, I did it in one line, line two, direct derivation.